How quickly do our churches fall away from the truths taught by Jesus and the apostles and build golden calves of alternate traditions? How quickly can apostasy occur? Let's look at Exodus 32. How quickly and easily was it for Israel and its spiritual leaders to slide down into idolatry? When the people saw how long it was taking Moses to come back down the mountain, they gathered around Aaron. Come on, they said, make us some gods who can lead us. We don't know what happened to this fellow Moses who brought us here from the land of Egypt. So Aaron said, take the gold rings from the ears of your wives and sons and daughters and bring them to me. Would our churches be so enthusiastic about apostasy as Israel was? All the people took off the golden rings, which were in their ears, and brought them to Aaron. He received what they handed him, fashioned it with an engraving tool, and made it a molded calf. Then they said, These are your gods, Israel, which brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Do people still celebrate apostasy as if it's a good thing? When Aaron saw this, he built an altar in front of the calf. Then Aaron announced, Tomorrow will be a festival to the Lord. They got up early the next day and offered up entirely burnt offerings and brought well-being sacrifices. The people sat down to eat and drink and then got up to celebrate. What did God say to Moses about the idol worship that Israel had slid into? The Lord said to Moses, Hurry back down. These people you led out of Egypt are acting like fools. They've already stopped obeying me and have made themselves an idol in the shape of a young bull. They bowed down to it, offered sacrifices, and said that it is the God who brought them out of Egypt. Moses, I've seen how stubborn these people are, and I'm angry enough to destroy them. So don't try to stop me, but I'll make your descendants into a great nation. Like Moses, do we intervene in prayer for our churches when they stray? But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you've brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say, with evil intent did he bring them out, to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your burning anger and relent from this disaster against your people. Did God really need reminding? Or was he speaking to Moses in anthropomorphic terms, similar to the manner of a parent with a child? Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. You swore to them by your very self and declared, I'll make your offspring as numerous as the stars of the sky and will give your offspring all this land that I've promised and they'll inherit it forever. So the Lord relented concerning the disaster he said he'd bring on his people. What did Moses return with after 40 days on the mountain? Can you spot how many depictions of the tablets are just plain wrong? Then Moses turned and went down the mountain with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand, tablets which were written on both sides, they were written on one side and the other. The tablets were the work of God, and the writing was God's writing, inscribed on the tablets. What did Joshua think he heard as he descended the mountain with Moses? And when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said to Moses, there's a noise of war in the camp. And he said, it's not the voice of them that shout for mastery, Neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome, but the noise of them that sing do I hear. What did Moses do when he realized what was going on? Would we get angry if the church slid into idolatry? What are some modern idols? 
Now it happened as soon as Moses came near the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moses' anger burned, and he threw the tablets from his hands, and shattered them at the foot of the mountain. Then he took the calf which they had made, and burned it with fire, and ground it to powder, and scattered it over the surface of the water, and made the sons of Israel drink it. What lame excuse did Aaron give to Moses? Do we also make lame excuses for bowing to the sinful wishes of a congregation? Then Moses said to Aaron, What did this people do to you, that you've brought such a great sin upon them? And Aaron said, Don't let the anger of my Lord burn. You know the people yourself, that they are prone to evil. For they said to me, Make a God for us who will go before us. For this Moses, the man who brought us up from the land of Egypt, we don't know what happened to him. So I said to them, Whoever has any gold, let them tear it off. Then they gave it to me, and I threw it into the fire, and out came this calf. Did Moses then call a meeting of all who were on the Lord's side in this matter? Who rallied to him? Moses saw that the people were running wild and that Aaron had let them get out of control and so become a laughing stock to their enemies. So he stood at the entrance to the camp and said, Whoever's for the Lord come to me. And all the Levites rallied to him. Did Moses order capital punishment of the people involved in idolatry? What could be the punishment in a Christian congregation? And he said to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Let every man put his sword on his side, and go in and out from entrance to entrance throughout the camp. And let every man kill his brother, every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. So the sons of Levi did according to the word of Moses. And about three thousand men of the people fell that day. Then Moses said, Consecrate yourselves to the Lord that he may bestow on you a blessing this day, for every man has opposed his son and his brother. What did Moses announce to the people? What shocking prayer did he say to God? The next day Moses said to the people, You've committed a terrible sin, but I'll go back up to the Lord on the mountain. Perhaps I'll be able to obtain forgiveness for your sin. So Moses returned to the Lord and said, Oh, what a terrible sin these people have committed. They've made gods of gold for themselves. But now if you'll only forgive their sin, but if not, erase my name from the record you've written. What was God's answer? How did he punish those involved? Yahweh said to Moses, Whoever has sinned against me, I'll blot him out of my book. Now go, lead the people to the place of which I've spoken to you. Behold, my angels shall go before you. Nevertheless, in the day when I punish, I will punish them for their sin. Yahweh struck the people because of what they did with their calf, which Aaron made. How quickly do our churches fall away from the truths taught by Jesus and the apostles? and build golden calves of alternate traditions. How quickly can apostasy occur? You decide.